Tribe, Book 2, Todd Mills Mystery, author R.D. Zimmerman, publisher, Scrib Pub, Minneapolis, Minnesota, narrator, Eric Ost. Chapter 27 Like the roar of an approaching jet, the deep, steady rumbling grew with each moment, and Janice was glad for it. She recognized what the sound meant, liberation. There was, however, no aircraft aiming right for a house or even approaching the nearby airport. Instead, Janice turned around at the kitchen table, where she sat and saw the top of a huge blue truck barreling down her alley. The plows were out in full force, and quite obviously they were making good progress. At least now she'd be able to get her car out of the garage. Thank God for small fame miracles. Less than ten minutes ago, she'd walked in the door after meeting Pat, and the phone had been ringing. She'd charged in, grabbed the cordless phone, and dropped herself at the breakfast table. It was Todd calling on his car phone to explain that they'd been to Zeb's apartment, not found him there, and that now he was taking Rollins downtown to the police station. Todd then went on to say he was going to swing by his house, pick up some clothes, and head back to her place in a little over an hour, refusing to go into it over the phone, but said there was something they needed to talk about. No shit, Sherlock, she thought, still seated at the small marble table, wearing her coat, not to mention her Sorel boots, beneath which had already formed a good-sized puddle. She tried to figure out a course of action. Todd was going to come back, and what was she going to do? Of course, she was going to tell him. she just met with Pat. She had to, somehow. She thought she might be able to mediate a solution to all this, but after seeing Pat, she realized it wasn't possible. So she'd report all that to Todd, and and then, well, she couldn't put it off any longer. She simply had to tell him that which she'd been avoiding for so long, namely that Pat might be Seb's real father. She bowed her head, shook it. How had this turned into such a mess? Where were Zeb and Ripka? Where they, were they all right? She stared down at the phone in front of her. Come on, damn it, I'll ring! Come on, Zeb, call me. The phone, however, just lay on its side on the small marble table as if it were dead. She thought back to last night when the intruder had broken in and taken Ripka and Janice castigated herself for not having been tougher, fought harder. She'd promised Zeb that nothing would happen to Ripka, that she'd guard her with her life. Yet she'd failed. If he didn't already, surely Zeb would hate her for this. God, she'd, all, she'd really and truly blown it. What kind of mother was she? What kind of grandmother? She could take care of no one, protect no one. She thought as her eyes began to bead with tears. Whatever confidence Zeb had been hoping to find in her, she'd lost. He gave her a second chance and she'd ruined it. Ah, oh, shit, she thought, staring at the phone. She'd be surprised if Zeb ever spoke to her again. Suddenly, the phone rang. She jumped in her chair and at first she couldn't believe it. Then she lunged for the handset. Hello, she said, unable to hide the desperation in her voice. It's me. Her voice immediately started trembling, and she asked, Zeb? Yeah. She bit her lip. Could barely speak. Yes, that was his voice. Just get a grip, Janice. Thank God, are you? You've got to come get us, he interrupted. What? You've got to pick us up. Sure, of course. Anything, anywhere. Do you have Ripka? Is she with you? Yeah. I've got her, he hesitated, then asked. Y you didn't, you didn't just give her to that guy, did you? What? Paul, this guy from the congregation had Ripka. I snuck up on him, that's how I got her back. But, but you didn't just give him to her, did you? No, God, no. She put her hand to her chest. Seb, please, believe me, please. He broke in and, so I can trust you, he asked bluntly. Absolutely. He didn't hurt you, did he? Are you all right? What? said Janice. Oh, I'm fine. But what about Ripka? What about you? You're not hurt, are you? No, but listen. We're at a phone booth in front of a gas station. It's cold and something terrible just happened. I'll tell you all about it, but you've got to come get us now, right now. I've already got my coat on. Zeb gave her the address and within seconds Janice was out the back door, tearing through the sun and snow to her garage. A Gay Mysteries Audiobooks I think it is easy to hate a label, but a face humanizes the word. So this effort is twofold. 
to offer comfort to those like myself that your world didn't end because you don't fit into the view of acceptable society on both sides. And in hopes of helping those with family that are LGBTQ, that it doesn't mean we are aliens from the child they once knew. Reassure them so they can maybe be supportive at the same time being true to their values.